Hello students. Today we are discussing about the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation. Before discussing about the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation, I want to say something about the wave function. As you know that that uh, in the quantum physics, uh, De Broglie said that that uh, there is in a wave associated with each and every moving particle. It means that that particle shows. Uh, uh, particle shows wave nature and this wave nature is uh, this wave nature is depicted by a function and that function is uh, uh, known as a, a wave function so wave what is uh, what is the wave function the wave function is a function which represent the uh, matter wave uh, now uh, this Schrodinger wave expression express the wave functions i in a different physical condition and the, this equation tell us the behavior of wave function associated with the uh, with the atomic particle uh, this is, uh, equation can be established just like a ordinary progressive wave equation so there are two types of a schrodinger wave equation one is a time dependent schrodinger wave equation another one is a time independent schrodinger wave equation time schrodinger uh, time dependent schrodinger wave equation is applicable where the particle is changing its energy with time it means that suppose that we are providing uh, energy uh, to a particle and in such a condition the electron is moving from s shell to p shell or p to d like that in this condition and the particle is changing its energy continuously but when particle is not changing its energy, it means that particle is revolving in a, a constant orbit. It, at that time, its, uh, current is, its uh, potential energy is also constant as well as uh, it is moving with a constant uh, kinetic energy. So, in in this condition, and the particle is not uh, the particle is not changes energy with the time. That that time the uh, the uh, the uh, wave equation which is applicable on this uh, such type of a particle is a time ind uh, independent wave equation now we are going to derive the time first time dependent wave equation so uh, as we know that that uh, um, a, a wave equations this uh, this matter wave is a uh, similar as a, a progressive plane progressive wave so uh, we know that the, the differential equation of plane progressive wave traveling in a uh, with the velocity v in a x direction is given like that in 12th class you have studied uh, some another uh, equation or some another form of plane progressive wave and that is represented by y is equal to a sine omega t okay sine omega t so this is also the uh, this this one is also the uh, solution of uh, plane progressive uh, wave equation but it is not a second order differential equation this is the simple uh, simple uh, representation of the the uh, wave equation and but if we want to represent a wave equation in the form of second order differential equation so uh, when uh, we are putting this value the value of a is y is equal to a sin omega t minus kx in this equation so what we will get we will get the uh, when we are putting the value at, uh, of a sin omega uh, y is equal to a sin omega t x in at the place of y uh, uh, in right side and left side uh, what we will get we will get that uh, both are equal rhs is equal to the uh, lhs and such a condition then we can say that y is equal to a sin omega t is the solution of this equation so in this way if you are putting the cos uh, in the the uh, any wave equation uh, which is in the form of cos and you substitute the value of that uh, wave equation in this equation then only you can get right hand this is equal to the left hand side so th this type of a equation is also uh, is known as a second order differential equation of the groen progressive wave or we can say that this is the one form of the plane progressive wave in a uh, in the form of second order differential equation so uh, now what we are doing we are just uh, uh, replacing this y with a psi and this p v with a v p uh, to converting this uh, equation from classical form to, uh, to its uh, quantum form so uh, as we know that that uh, v 
VP is uh, VP is the omega by a, and what is VP here? VP is the uh, phase velocity, and phase velocity is omega by a. So we are going to substitute the value of VP. We so uh, we substitute the uh, this VP is in the denominator. So when we are going to substitute the value uh, of VP in denominator, omega come in the denominator, but k uh, go back to the numerator. So now our equation is converted in this form. So this is the purely this this is the pure wave nature of, of the equation because omega and k are the uh, constant which represents the, the quantities which represent the uh, wave nature uh, wave nature only so the equation the solution of this equation is uh, the chosen solution of this equation is y is equal to a e raised to the power minus i omega t uh, t minus k now the biggest question is why only we choose this solution why we are not choose any other solution as we know that that psi is a, a complex quantity and uh, the complex psi is a complex quantity so that it it have the uh, the uh, real number as well as it have the uh, uh, complex number uh, sorry imaginary number so uh, we know that that uh, uh, the complex quantity the equation of uh, uh, of any complex quantity or we can say that the the if a quantity is uh, moving uh, in a moving um, uh, in a sin in a sinusoidal form form then and we can say that that uh, that uh, the equation of that type of a quantity is represented by y is equal to in a complex form y is equal to to sin theta i theta plus i sorry theta plus i cos cos theta okay so uh, this is the, uh, the what is this this is nothing but it is a uh, sinusoidal form of the uh, wave equation or we can say that this is the one of the solution of our, our wave equation so in this sin theta is the real quantity and i cos omega uh, cos theta is the uh, the imaginary part of uh, for complex number so the uh, euler equation of this such type of a uh, uh, equation is uh, given in the form of uh, of uh, exponential so this is the one of the form which is also the solution of uh, this wave equation and it's contain the uh, uh, real part as well as the complex part so this the the this real this sinusoidal form and uh, that's this sinusoidal uh, equation is written in the its euler form okay and, uh, and it's uh, and here are uh, we have seen that that uh, this contain the real uh, part also and and the uh, uh, imaginary part also okay so that's why we uh, cal we take this equation uh, this solution uh, for our uh, uh, progressive wave equation okay now what happened now the next problem which uh, we have seen here that omega and k both represent the wave nature only there is uh, uh, the, we, we are not finding any, any quantity here which represent the the particle nature and psi is a quantity which represent the particle nature as well as wave nature therefore what we are doing we are just uh, changing uh, these two quantities with a uh, quantities which represent the wave nature as well as the particle nature both and as we know that uh, in quantum physics that omega is related with the energy and k is related with the momentum how this we can calculate in a uh, below derivation so uh, as you know that by the planck's law law we know that that e is equal to h nu okay and nu is equal to 2 omega by uh, omega upon 2 pi so i'm going to substitute the value of this nu uh, here value of nu here so uh, what is my the value of nu nu is equal to omega by 2 pi so uh, now e becomes h up, uh, omega by 2 pi now we know that h upon 2 pi is equal to what h upon 2 pi is equal to h cut so my equations become e is equal to h cut omega now what i want i want a value of omega so what is the value of omega from this equation omega is equal to e upon h cut when e we get the 
E. E what E represents? E represent the uh, uh, energy. G N omega is the uh, uh, frequency. So frequency is related with the energy, and we know that that the uh, main aim of the uh, wave is uh, transform the energy from one uh, place to another place. So E is basically A represent the wave nature. Now we are talking about the uh, K. So uh, as we are we know that by the De Broglie hypothesis the P is equal to h by lambda, where P is the momentum of the particle, lambda is the wavelength and of matter wave, and h uh, is equal to Planck's constant. And as we know that that lambda is equal to h by at uh, 2k, where k is the propagation constant. And so I'm going to substitute the value of lambda here. Uh, so when I am going to substitute the va uh, lambda value of lambda here, my equation becomes like that. Uh, 2k upon on uh, sorry h k upon 2 pi right. so what i want i want a value of k so from this equation i am going to calculate the value of k so what is my value uh, sorry uh, what is the value of k now now k is equal to p by h cut uh, and i so what I, from where i get this h cut uh, as i explained before that h upon 2 pi is equal to h cut so this this is the uh, uh, here we get the h cut so h cut uh, p is equal to uh, h h cut by k and what is the value of k k is equal to p upon h cut so from equation 2 we get the value of omega and from equation 3 we get the value of k now see here k is uh, represent the wave nature but p is represent the uh, particle nature so we get the particle nature as well as uh, uh, wave nature uh, so now we are getting the both thing from k uh, omega and and k so we are going to substitute the value of omega and k from equation 2 and 3 to equation number uh, 1 so when we are going to substitute the value of omega e by h cut h cut is in the numerator and p by h cut so h cut here also h cut is the numerator so we take the h cut common so that my equation is what now my equation is becomes a psi is equal to psi is equal to e raised to the power r minus i h cut et minus p x. Now, see here, uh, et is represent the, the wave nature, p represent the, the uh, particle nature and iota is there. It means that this whole equation is a, a complex and psi, as we know that that psi is a complex quantity. So, this whole solution is also uh, represent a complex quantity. The, uh, now, uh, we know that the uh, total energy of the particle well, is equal to E is equal to P square by uh, 2M uh, plus v, uh, v. It is uh, in the classical mechanics. So, what is the main function of the, the wave? The main function of wave is transfer the energy. And here also the in the form the particle in the form of wave also transfer the energy from one place to another place. So, which type of energy? The energy which is the sum of kinetic energy plus uh, uh, potential energy. So, uh, we are converting this equation one uh, in a quantum form by multiplying the psi both sides. So, we are going to uh, multiply the psi both sides. So, now uh, our uh, particle is going to be a uh, this matter wave is going to be a uh, transfer the uh, potential energy and kinetic energy the, uh, by, um, potential energy as well as kinetic energy. So, this is the equation and in which we are representing uh, thing that that uh, particle is uh, the particle is transfer the energy in the form of uh, in the in particle uh, in the form of uh, wave okay uh, so this equation helps us to form the uh, uh, form the uh, schrodinger wave equation and so what we are getting here we are getting here the uh, the uh, one thing which is the total energy eh and when we uh, see back in equation 4 our e is also present in equation number 4 as well as we get the uh, p square psi here and we are getting p uh, in equation number 4 also it means that with the help of equation number 4 and 5 we are able to construct the uh, schrodinger wave equation so uh, uh, now uh, because the second uh, the in classical mechanics the wave equation is the, in the form of uh, second order differential equation therefore or we are also uh, uh, we are also uh, uh, creating the uh, schrodinger wave equation in the form of second order differential equation therefore we are different, uh, differentiating in uh, equation number 4 with respect to, to T 
and then with respect to x so first we uh, differentiate equation number bar 4 we differentiate equation number 4 with respect to t when we are differ differentiate equation number 4 with respect to t what uh, we get uh, we get this i uh, minus i e upon x h square a e raised to power minus i h cut et minus p s how uh, i get this thing In, as you know that that when whenever we are differentiating e raised to the power e to the power a x when we are di differentiating e to the e to the power a x what happen and uh, as you know that that when we are differentiating e to the power e x first e to the power e x is uh, right as it is e to the power differentiation we are doing differentiation of uh, e to the power x with respect to e x okay so when we are differentiating e to the power x with respect to x what we are getting we getting e to the power a x x as it is after that at we differentiate the power of uh, e so when we are differentiating power of e a what is the power of e a x so when a x is differentiate at what we will get we get only a so uh, sorry this is a so what we are getting we are getting e to the power a x multiply by x a a when we are differentiating what e to the power a x so in a similar way when we are differentiating in what we are differentiating this equation number 4 with respect to uh, to x what we will get we will first we get this equation as it is a in the as e raised to power ax we get similarly we get what a e raised to power minus i uh, upon h cut et minus ps after that we differentiate the power of e so when we are differentiating the power of e e minus i h cut is a constant so it's come here or when we differentiate uh, this with respect to t, uh, t so et when et is differentiate with respect to t what we will get e but uh, here minus p x because x is uh, not depending upon the t so the uh, this uh, term becomes zero so after differentiating psi with respect to t what uh, we get we get i minus i e h cut a e raised to power minus i h cut et minus p x i think so you understood well this now what we are doing that we are going to substitute the value of a e raised to power minus i h cut et minus p x as uh, Uh, as a psi why we are doing this why we are doing it because uh, um, from equation and for uh, we see that that value of psi we see that this value of psi i is equal to what is equal to a e raised to power minus h cut et minus px and here also we get what uh, again we get the psi back so instead of writing this whole equation we only write what the psi Okay, so the what is our next term? Del psi by del t is equal to minus i e x uh, e psi by h cut. Okay, hey, now what what we need? We need the value of e e e psi. So when I am going to calculate the value of e psi from this equation, what happen? This i is come inside the you know uh, numerator. So when it's come uh, in a here it is in the uh, in the numerator but when it we, it's come back here uh, so it is come into the denominator so h cut h cut upon i okay h cut upon i i e psi is equal to what h cut upon i del psi upon del t okay so now what happen this i means this iota uh, the position i of iota is in the denominator and uh, in a complex quantity we never ever write i in a denominator it is always come in a uh, uh, with a multiplication with any any quantity so uh, to take this i uh, uh, in a uh, numerator what we are doing we are rationalizing it so uh, how we are rationalizing it by multiplying in the above equation the multiply up uh, the above equation uh, with i a, a with i by i so when we are multiplying this above equation by i by i what happen i multiply by i this i multiply with this i becomes minus of 1 
so minus is already existing here and when my i multiply with the i uh, what we will get minus of one so minus minus become um plus and and after that what happen after that uh, uh, that when uh, h cut is multiplied with i is become i h cut so my equation become del psi by del t e psi a upon an i h cut so uh, e psi upon i h cut and when we are calculating the value of e psi now this uh, this e uh, i is in a numerator but when we are calculating the value of uh, uh, sorry this uh, i is in the the denominator but when we are calculating the value of e psi is come into the numerator so when we are cross multiplying it what is the what value we will get uh, e psi is equal to i h cut del psi by uh, del t so this is what this is uh, nothing but it is a value of energy now i am going to calculate the uh, momentum so uh, as you know uh, as you see here the, the value of momentum is in the form of uh, p square psi therefore we uh, differentiate equation number 4 or uh, with respect to s twice why we are doing it it um, i am going to simplify it here when we are differentiating the uh, equation number 4 with respect to at what we will get uh, as uh, first we differentiate the uh, a, a e uh, keep uh, a e to the power whatever where we differentiating so it's come same uh, as it is after that we differentiated what uh, uh, the power of e so when we are differentiating the power of e with respect to s uh, et become zero why et become zero because t is not a function of x so in this situation we are getting what we are getting in minus minus become plus i multiply by p upon h cut so here we get the i p upon an h cut square so again uh, this equation mm, we are uh, here we are if we are going to substitute the value of a e raised to power minus i h cut e t minus p a you replace by the psi then our equation become this but in this situation we are getting the value of p psi and what we needed we needed the value of p square so uh, that's why we again differentiate this equation with respect to x so again we are differentiating this equation with respect to x so now we differentiate which equation this equation not the equation number 4 now we are differentiating this equation so when we are differentiating this equation with respect to x again what we will get we will get what this again we are getting the same this uh, a e raised to power minus i uh, h cut et minus ps we get as it is after it bit we differentiate the power of e again so when we are differentiating power of e what i am getting i p uh, by h cut but uh, um, from the first differentiation we get uh, already we have i p upon uh, upon h cut so when we multiply this both what we will get i iota multiplied by iota become uh, minus of 1 so that we get the minus value here Uh, p multiply by p become p square uh, substitute the value of this uh, whole uh, equation uh, equal to psi so a e raised to power minus h cut by e t minus p x becomes psi a h cut multiply by h cut becomes h cut square so uh, what the what is the value of now uh, p square uh, p square psi the value of p square psi is equal to minus h cut square del psi by del x so uh, now we having a Uh, value of e psi as well as the value of p square psi right so uh, just we substitute the value of this uh, e psi and p square psi in equation number 5 so when we are going to substitute this value oh Get right. So this is my equation number five. This is my equation number six, and this one is equation number seven. So from equation on uh, six and seven, we substitute the value in equation number five. So at the place of e psi, when I substitute i h cut del psi by del t, t this comes here. And uh, after that, at the place of p square, I substitute the value h cut square. And uh, so in the uh, denominator there is two pi. I uh, so minus uh, i h cut uh, is Square upon 2m, m uh, multiplied by del square by del uh, del square side by del x plus v side. So this equation, this total equation is known as a, a time-dependent Schrödinger wave equation. So this is the uh, time-dependent Schrödinger wave equation. In my next video, I am sharing with you the solution of time-independent wave equation. And um, thank you very much.